Hey, Barrett Edelstein here, your celeb expert and your celeb savant. Celeb Savant is a weekly entertainment show. We have long-form career retrospective type interviews with celebrities, singers, actors, and industry experts. Spool Maloya is a South African recording artist, songwriter, entrepreneur, and motivational speaker. Spool has been able to immerse himself in the serious side of culture as well as being at the forefront of contemporary music, particularly Kwaito. In 1997, Spoo released his first solo album, Amaloya, which was eventually certified gold. The success of his debut album gave him the confidence to release his 1998 follow-up album, which featured the group TKZ. In 1999, Spoo took a break from performing as a solo artist and became instrumental in the formation of the collaborative group TKZ Family. In 2000, Spoo recorded his third solo album, which featured the highly sought-after jazz vocalist Gloria Bosman. To commemorate his 25-year journey in the world of Kwaito, Spool Maloya has released a special anniversary album, 25 Years in the Game, featuring aspiring artists and underground producers. Up next on Slab Savant, we've got Spoo Maloya. So how are you doing and where are you in the world? Okay, uh, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, I'm in Soweto in Johannesburg, South Africa. So yeah, now I know I'm... you've been in the industry for a number of years, over 20 years, even longer. Your journey in the entertainment world, at what age did you decide, cool, I want to be in the entertainment world, and how did that journey progress? Okay, yo. <laughs> okay, it started uh, when I was still uh, at school, you know, because how it started, I, 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 I wasn't sure if I, I had a passion uh, or dreaming to be in the music la- industry la- in the later stage, but what I can say is that I remember, I, I'll hint that I will just hint some incidents of the signs that will uh, that took me to love the music because I remember during school days I used to vi- visit this old uh, old guy, uh, unfortunately passed on Mongezi. Mm-hmm. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. He used to love me a lot, <clears throat> and he's one of those guys that used to have. Um, it was a fashion in the township when someone owns a haifa, a haifa. Yes. A radio with steps, a technique one, you know. It had a CD, CD and double deck uh, tape. Mm-hmm. So I used to visit his room, and uh, he had a lot of CDs. That because d- during that time, CDs were still new, you know. Yeah. I think the popular thing that time it was cassettes, yeah. but now we had both the CD player and the cassette uh, player, a double deck one. So we used to visit his room. He would leave me there and go and do his things. And at some at, at some instance, it happened that I I started to uh, buy empty cassette and tape all the music that he had, compiling my own uh, thing, doing my own compilation. It was uh, during the time when uh, ballad songs and R and B songs were popular, American R and B and all that. So I used to tape those songs and all that, and put a nice cassette together and give it a name, like <clears throat> love, 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 uh, love uh, ballads. Mm. Some I call them quite storm and all that. I'll give it just different romantic names <laughs> and go and sell it to to the taxi to the taxi <laughs> rank, you know. <laughs> because what I, how I used to do it, I'll buy a box of cassette and tape, maybe have let's say about twenty cassettes, and go and stand next to the to the to the road and and stop the taxi, and I'll ask the driver that I need to play you a song, uh, this cassette. Uh, if you are interested to buy it, I'm selling it very cheap for you. For 25 friends then i'll go to the text and play that cassette for the driver i'm telling you you'll play first song and second song and say i'm buying this and give my 20 and i'll get off and then take another taxi again <laughs> and take another text i'll be on the taxis up and down until i finish all the cassettes yeah <laughs> <laughs> then i think it's when i started to develop that i, I love music then it's when I, my interest was more into music then i started to listen to all the genre of music started to under but when I started uh, uh, to be in the business of the music, it's when I got an opportunity. I remember I was doing standard seven, studying in Devon. I got an opportunity to happen to I happened to to audition in Sarafina. I remember Mbongen I was doing Sarafina too, because hmm. yeah. he had Sarafina one that was busy was had a contract in in Broadway in Broadway in America. So now they had to do a second campaign that one that was gonna tour Europe. Because that one couldn't tour Europe. Now, then when they opened second company, I was part of the audition. 
I won the audition, but uh, because I was still at school, my father didn't want me to take over. And then my father uh, told Mongen to to chase me away, you know, because <laughs> my father wanted me to finish school. Yes, you know? yeah, same, yeah. But because already I was inclined with that uh, people around, because we were in market theatre, and there were a lot of stars that were coming in market theatre. Your Chico Twala, your name few artists, the, the the musician, both the actors and actresses. So it happened that I got interest in very interested because these are the people that I was idolizing and see them on TV. Then seeing them live, it was to me it was wow. I can now in, in, in touch with such people, rub shoulder with such people. Then even when I went back to Devon to finish my school, my mind was still back there, you know. Then after finishing my matric, when I went came back, came back home to Joburg, uh, I went to study uh, electronic engineering. But my love was still into music. Then I would go to Lindelanim Keys, and then I, I ask him to also connect me with the uh, uh, people in the game because I love music mostly, you know. Then it, it happened that uh, I started to do the what you call. I started to be um, a session musician when your Yvonne Chaka Chaka, Chico Twala, to name those artists during that time, when they were recording, I was part of the session musician. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll start, I'll, I was starting to earn some money, uh, able to buy myself clothes and all that, because I used to love fashion since from then, you know, because we grew up with that culture of fashion. Then I started to buy myself the clothes that I wanted. Then I also like started now to buy my mom grocery and all that. Then, you know, then the love of music developed, developed until such a time when uh, Lindelan Mkise connected me formally with Chico Twala. Then I became Chico Twala's backing vocalist, you know. Then when I was Chico's backing vocalist, it's when I, I met Mdu, because Mdu Masilel at that time was playing keyboards and, and Manda Speaker was also playing keyboards. So me and Mdu, we got, we got closer because me and him, I think we were idolizing each other on, on the fashion world because he looked at me the way I dressed and I looked at him the way he dressed then I, I think it, we became uh, 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 intact and it became automatic, automatically we became friends then when yeah. we became friends and if Du was working mostly uh, in studios you know, so I used to visit him when he was working in the studios then until such a time when he was about to release his first album where I became involved on his album Tiki Tiki Yo until such a time where we formed a group called Bashamblani. I think the, the, the beginning of Smooth started from that time. As we know, you've been in the industry for a number of years. So what keeps you going? What keeps you getting up? I know you love the music. I know you love inspiring others. But what makes you say, cool, I want to create another album, carry on producing, carry on interacting and creating in the music world? When you start to uh, become a role model in disguise, because uh, you, you, you grow up with this thing whereby people idolizes you because of the way you dress, because of the way you look, because of the way you so neat, and because of the way you conduct yourself. Then when I started to be in the music industry, I think uh, it became easy for me to basically keep that dignity and keep, mm. that, uh, uh, keep my head up and making sure that uh, I don't want to disappoint people. Because each and every day, people, when they, when they praise you, when they say things, when they say good things, when they idolize you, and then I didn't want to disappoint people, and I, I, I said this is going to be my responsibility to keep on uh, looking good, to keep on uh, be, being the best, even how much difficult things would be. But let me keep keep to be to be the best because I'm looked after by a lot of young people in the township who wants to be like smooth at some at some stage. So. I think that kept me going because I didn't want to disappoint uh, the people that were idolizing me. So tell us about this new album. Okay, the new album, uh, 25 Years Celebration of Smoo Maloya in the Game. It's a very interesting journey because one thing that w made me to feel interested to uh, venture or to, to, to see myself uh, Giving, giving back to the communities because of this thing where you see people idolizing you, number one. And when you see people looking after you and, 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 and people like uh, all the time when they see you, they see this person that can help us. They see this person that uh, when I mix with this person, I know my future will be somewhere. And I'm talking about young, talented people. When you meet them across, when you, when you walk around 
taxi rank malls everywhere in the townships around in suburbs wherever you wherever you go in clubs wherever you go you'll find those two three people that will say hey, i need your number i've got songs that i've done i've got this i think that thing it, it started to encourage me and it started to make you feel that i think at some stage let me start helping people because all the time when people see me i think they see help from me then I, I started to develop that love and i started to develop that thing with me that let me have this this responsibility and see if maybe I can try to help people and plow back to the community, how we, how possible it be. And then I, me and Jake and Ruth, my, our business partner, we came together and say, I, I want to celebrate my 25 years celebration, but how I want to celebrate it, I want to celebrate it in style where I feature all the upcoming artists and young producers in the project and also do the music that is relevant and do the music that is talking their language and the music that is currently uh, relevant to the market. Then it's when like we developed that. And think, I think it's when then we discovered these kids and discovering these kids. Then we started recording uh, the, the album, recording the album. We came up with beautiful songs. When we spoke about this before the starting of the album, Jake said to me, Smooth, uh, you must understand that I know that you are a quite a veteran and you still uh, 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 want to hear that flag of a quiet legend. But I think at some stage, you will need to also venture or evolve your, your sound, mix Equito with a piano, because bear in mind that if we empower these young kids, let's empower them with a sound that talks to them. Let's empower them with a, with a sound that is relevant to their market. And then after that, it was swiftly, we moved e- e- easily. And already Jake's was also starting to develop other producers who were bringing nice sound to him. And then it made life easier. And then he said to me, Smoo, I've got this producer and this producer and this producer, your Vinci code, your 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 your, your teams are, and to name the few. And he said, Let me call these boys together to bring the beats and bring the artist. And then we start we start working on the project. And then uh, I think it made the project very possible because also what also made the, the the project to be easy is because we were not limiting these boys and girls we said to them we're only coming up with the concept mm. and then after developing the concept you say to them write whatever that you feel is going to be free we gave them the freedom as much as possible i think that is why they 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 could explore their talent as they did on the album now you referenced that when you first started making those mixtapes there was that uh, uh, smooth R&B, and then there's been quite a, I'm a piano. There's been different genres that are popular over time. What are your thoughts about the way music types comes and goes? And, you know, you've got the 80s pop, and then you've got the disco, and then that's no longer popular, but then that comes back. What are your thoughts about the flowing of music genres and how people approach them? I think, I think more than anything, we must, as people generally, I think we must have this mindset of accepting the evolve the evolve the, the evolving of sound. It's very important, and as a musician or as an artist uh, or as a songwriter, I think it's important to listen to all the genre. You mustn't limit yourself because the minute you limit yourself, you'll end up sounding the same. Mm-hmm. But by listening to different sound, it's easy for you as an artist to challenge yourself and able to explore. So I think I think that on me, it made life easier when Jake's even came to me and said, Smooth, let's 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 shift from Kwaito because the sound has changed. Let's move with the time and do something else. But the only thing that I did and the only thing that we emphasized on the on, on the album, we said, on my side, I'll remain the smooth that they know from Kwaito. I'll deliver in my piano, but with my own style, with the style that because remember, I have a fan base that is following me. And that fan base, some of them, yes, it's husbands, it's wives, it's fathers, it's, it's, it's mothers. But they when they tell their kids about me, they will tell them that this person, we grew up listening to him when we were still at school. But the very same person is still delivering the same uh, style of his, but in a different music mm-hmm. to be relevant to you. So now, it makes a crossover yeah. of, of, of of a fan base, you exactly. know. So so this is why uh, it, that it made it made life easier and it worked for me. 
So the whole family can listen. <laughs> All family can listen yes. from the child. This is why I have another song. I have another song on the album called Dallas Good, that she was vulgar, meaning uh, we've been there, uh, we've been up and down, uh, we've been doing things, they've been up and down. And then there's a part that says, You do you know, Spuma Loy, Humble Buzuma Map, go and ask your mother, go and ask your father. They will tell you better who Spu is. Okay. That's, a, that's a song because. I'm telling the youth, I'm telling the people that I'm singing with that go and ask your mother. I always tell even the young boys when they come across, when they see them in the street and everywhere or even on Facebook or even on social media, when they ask, who is this boo? Who is this boo? Who is this boo? Who is this boo? And I tell them that go and ask your mother, go and ask your father. Your father will know me. And if you go to Google, you'll know me who boo is. And then it, it, it becomes very exciting when you share that to the young ones. And, and eventually, when they go and ask their mother, their mother witnesses that. And when they start to go back and listen what their mother used to listen during the time they were still young, they will tell, you know, I remember my father playing this song. I remember my father dancing, but I don't know who was this person. But yeah. now it relates. You know, now this is why, I mean, it becomes a family-oriented uh, sound and you, 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 you come across where you have the fan base to everyone. You create music, you mentor You've got your entertainment world. You've got many different fingers in different elements of the music industry and entertainment world. How do you balance it all? Uh, bear in mind that um, uh, I think what what makes one person to be grounded is when you you believing in yourself. Yeah, that's number one, and also believing that uh, more than anything, there's higher power. God also is the one that always leads us and shapes our way, and shapes our and, and shapes our future. I'm not going to take glory upon me, but I'll always say some of the things, they just happen uh, automatically. But I think it's because of the love of God and it's because of the the, the, the purpose that God wants you to serve, to serve at some point, you know. Yeah, I always balances that, balances my life or my music life. And I'm also able to separate Spu, the family man, and Spu, the artist. Okay. Because that's what that's what is very important. Yeah. People must understand when I'm in the township, when I'm around my people, the community, I'm not smooth the artist. I'm smooth mm. and jangas. Yeah. But when I'm on stage, I'm smooth my lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Because once you, you're able to carry both being accepted as a as a father or as a man, as a as a as a, as a brother, as someone in the society, it makes life easy for you to balance that and it, it makes you to be uh, taken as this person who's not pompous, who doesn't carry the fame. In, because most of the people, the problem that they have, the minute you start to carry the fame in your head yes. and you feel that everywhere you go, you are a superstar, yeah. you have arrived, I'm all that. Then you start to lose separating the two, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I see, I see people in my mind who are like that. <laughs> you know, like everywhere they go in the shopping mall, in the bathroom, in the toilet, they must be, I'm arrived. <laughs> yeah, because cause, cause the problem is that sometimes you end up you end up doing things that you're not supposed to do. You end up doing things that are crazy. And it's very important to always find yourself. Yeah, It's always important that you always remind yourself who you are and where you come from. And bear in mind, at some point, I was, I was just a boy from the township who was an ordinary boy. Mm. And uh, it, always when I'm around my community, I must be that man, I must be that boy, so that I can able to interact with the people, yeah. interact with my people, and make them to to to, to ha- accept me and stay humble as possible. Mm. Then when I'm on stage, I'm a star. Yeah. <laughs> then it's a different person because I have to deliver. Yes. It, I, I, when I'm on stage, I'm in a job. But when I'm not, when I'm off stage, I'm off the job. So, yes. Zbu, I love this game. I know if I had to ask you this question tomorrow, two days later, I know your answer will be different every time because there yeah, are true. millions of them. There are so many of them. But if you had to push play to five songs by other artists, once we finish this conversation, what would those five songs be and by whom? I, I, I listen to... Even if I don't, I don't, I don't know the norm, the name of the song per se, you know. Okay, okay. some of the new songs. Okay, but, but, so but, just the artists, uh, the artists, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that I love KO, I love KO, I love Zex Van I love DJ Zinke, I I love uh, Gabs are the small. Why am I'm, I'm I'm quoting these people? It's people from different genre. I love the way these people they conduct themselves into the fame world or into the music world. Yep. Uh, I'll start with KO. KO all the time when he sees me. He always say front man and he's very always humble. But at the same time, the way he delivers on these songs, the way he writes his music is a phenomenal artist. I, and I, I adore his music so much. And at some stage, uh, I would love to collaborate with him. Because, That's I mean, true. at some point, you, 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 we judge people based on the media or judge people based on the on the newspaper, but when you start to see interact with the person live, because the, the the newspaper it will sell you what you want to want what you want to buy. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and then Zex Bantuini is a Zex Bantuini is a hard worker. He's a flipping hard worker. Uh, Zex Bantuini is that person that says, "I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna do it." And and if he wants to knock the door, he knocks the door and gets to it. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, I quoted uh, uh, DJ Zinke. Mm. DJ Zinke, I see a man. I see a man and a woman in one. He's got that. She's got that uh, woman, but at the same time, she's got that power of a man, yes. of standing up and that responsibility and that drive that I can do this. So yeah, basically, those are the people that uh, when I look at them and when I listen to their music. It, it it gives me a drive and I, I get encouraged every day and inspired. Well, mate, let's put out that the next album, you'll be collaborating with all of them. By God's mercy, by God's grace, because when God says yes, yes, it will be yes. I think exactly. uh, by saying this with my mind and saying this with my mouth, it will manifest, I know. Exactly. God is <laughs> listening to us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Spoo, the podcast is listened to throughout the world. So as a final message, what would you like to say to the listeners? Uh, to the listeners, I'll say, please uh, go to all the digital platforms and and log to Swoo Maloya, 25 years celebration album, 25 years celebration in the game. The album consists of about 11 songs. And in the songs are featured over about 22 young producers and artists. It's so amazing to have a family of 22 people in 11 songs in one album. I say to people, please support this album. Don't support this album because you want to push through. Support this album because we want to enrich those young boys and girls mm. who are featured in the album. We want to see the future being bright. By you supporting this album, you making somebody's life, you're making a change in somebody's life. 